Hello and welcome to Chateau Dreams. This is our family's story of moving to the beautiful south of France to a partially renovated chateau during Covid lockdown with all of our animals. Now we're here, we will continue the restoration, we will go and interview people, we will see the sights, have a little bit of French culture and hopefully have some fun with some volunteers. Thanks very much for watching and if you enjoy it, please don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Chateau Dreams. I'm so sorry this time it's taken me, goodness, I think we're at eight days now, aren't we, to produce this episode. I have a new computer and I have a new set of microphones, all of which is great. I'm not using them in this episode though because they won't talk to each other. I have to have a separate computer uh, due to um, encryption and what I do for a living for my actual job. So that one's really whizzy, but something for vlogging obviously is a little bit simpler and it's taking goodness a long time to get to learn how to use it. So thank you for bearing with me. I'm hoping it'll all be working next week and then you should see some swanky transitions and other fun stuff that we haven't yet been able to do with the dinosaur that I have been using. So that's all good. Anyway, lovely to see you all here now and I hope you've been having a great week. Since I last saw you, I actually had to zip off to the city of London, which was really fun. So I thought we'd take a little bit of a look at that. Just a couple of things, really, but just to give a sense of what's going on in the city at the moment in the financial district. After that, I thought we would look back in time, first with an interview with George, Man Friday, who, as you remember, was here for a few weeks to help us with all of those boxes and the general chaos. George popped back this week for a quick hello for a couple of days before he goes off to his next adventure. So we were really happy to see him. After that, I don't know if you remember, but in September when we arrived here, we had two gentlemen who came to stay with us, Arno and Leon both of whom are humanitarian aid workers and friends since childhood. When they came here, they worked on a number of projects for their three weeks, for which we're very grateful, one of which was the clearing and sorting of what is the walled garden and putting in of some beds. So please bear with me with the footage because obviously it's back in the dinosaur dark age, but hopefully we can string something together just to give you a little bit of an idea of what things were like then. I'm going to take another look at Q&As. I think we're up to date. I think there was a question about the number of horses we have here. So um, we at the moment have 10 horses and a foal that you will have seen, Henri, who was born actually here in May, who's a racehorse foal. And if you have any other questions about anything, please don't hesitate to let me know. Thanks so much for watching. <music> Lovely to have you back. Um, George is our original Man Friday, who you will have seen in episode two, but only very briefly with a mask on. So George had just come back to see us. He comes back and does um, commando Man friday um, not naked, just busy, <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the summers when he has time. And he's about to go off and study his third year biology over at Cape Town. He's an environmentalist, so that's really cool. So George is back hanging out with us for a couple of days. So George, what was it like when you first came here with all those boxes? Very different. I think living off the George Foreman grill, having sausages and steaks off the George Foreman grill, boxes everywhere, grass and nettles and brambles everywhere. Some of the, house, some of the rooms just weren't in use. There were just rooms full of boxes and everything was dirtier and everything was less organised and massive improvements have been made. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, no, that, that is really, really, that's really good to hear. Yeah. Um, and another question. Mommy, I love you. I love you too. When you came up the drive with all the vines over the left hand and the right hand side, what did you actually think? I thought this is a really cool place. I remember when, I remember whilst taking me up and the Scarlet being very scared of me. You were very scared of me the first time we met, remember that? I yeah, no, you remember that. Well, you, I didn't, didn't think you were there. You were there, you, you were there, we met you. Yeah, I but, remember you went to the cherry pickle. Scarlett yes. wasn't one time. Yes, mm -hmm. so I got picked up in the cherry picking van. And it was me, Scarlett, and Scarlett was really excited to see me until she saw me. And then you were very scared and you didn't say a word to me all trip. You were silent. But yeah, really cool place. It is a beautiful place here. And do you think, um, so in terms of the, when you came this time, obviously it's been a year since you were last here. What were the yeah. big and the big things you've noticed that are different this time? The big change I think has to be the rose garden. Because I remember, I remember 
it was me, I like forged the path through the brambles and nettles two years ago and then last year it was a chicken pen and the pheasant and the peacock pen. Now it's a garden. So we'll see where next year heads, you know? <laughs> That's super cool. And um, oh, tell us what you're going to go and do in South Africa for a so, year. So hopefully a lot of scuba diving, hopefully a lot of biology, maybe a bit of football, mm -hmm. we'll see. And maybe some learning if I get around to it. <laughs> That's fantastic. And um, George comes from Wales, where we used to live very close to us, which is cool. And what's it like in Wales now, post-Covid? Because obviously I haven't been back. It's same old, same old, you know, like nothing's changed. I mean, I live in Leeds mostly, but when I come back, but yeah, it's calm. Mom says, Mama, nothing new there, really. Sleepy old town. Well, thank you very much for coming to see us again, George. We look forward to seeing you very, very soon. And in the meantime, the very best of luck in South Africa. And I hope the pasta's all right. Sorry, it's a bit of a rushed interview. <laughs> thank you for having me and thank you for the pasta. <laughs>
let's see what we can find over here. So this image from the coronation procession of Edward VI in 1547 shows Old St Paul's Cathedral on the right and the pre-fire tower of St Mary Le Beau on the left. So St Mary Le Beau was built in 1080 by Le Franc, William the Conqueror's Archbishop of Canterbury, who accompanied him from Beck in Normandy. Norman church, which may have replaced a building of Saxon orange, was part of a policy dominating London and was constructed out of the same stone as William's Tower of London, imported from Caen. The new St Mary Le Beau, London, imported from Caen. The new St Mary Le Beau may well have been cheerfully disliked by the citizens of Cheapside as an object of oppression. Gosh, what an interesting crucifix. I've never seen one done like that before. As you can see, this church of St. Mary Le Beau was restored by Sir Christopher Wren on the site of a church destroyed by the Great Fire of London. It was then again destroyed in the Second World War and rebuilt again in 1964 by the Lord Bishop of London in the presence of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. And look, as you look out of the gates, life of the financial district carries on. There are many churches in the square mile. We're now walking down Cheapside, one of the main streets in the city of London. We're walking down towards the roundabout with the mayor's house, Lord Mayor's house on the right and the Bank of England on the left. So I think I've got enough time to show you quickly. I hope I have. We've got King Street coming up on the left with Queen Street on the right. King Street leads down to the gate, sorry, to the Guild Hall, which is down there. There's a lovely museum in there if you ever get the chance to visit. This building, number one poultry, is rather controversial. Prince Charles called it a carbuncle. Other people absolutely adore it. There's a garden on the top which is really rather beautiful and has amazing views. Unfortunately, they have to keep security guards up there now, just in case people try and leap off. I don't know if you can see them, but I really rather like these figures here at the top. There's so much I'd love to show you, but I have to get back to France. This is the Lord Mayor's house. Isn't it super? Yes. City of London's Magistrates Court. Oh look, and there's the front of number one poultry. It's meant to look like a boat, I think. This here is the Royal Exchange, which is really the heart of the city of London. You can see the shard in the background to the right. And this curious building to my left is actually the Bank of England. I'll try and get a better shot for you. But all of our gold bars, all the country's gold bars that are held in deposit, are kept underneath the road here. And you can actually arrange a tour to go and see. Isn't it amazing? Quite a big building, really. Just do a quick panorama for you so you can see what's going on. Right, back to Mansion House tube station. I've got to get to Gatwick for the Gatwick Express and then on home to France. I will try and take some interesting shots on the way if I see anything. Bank tube station named after the bank. Queen Victoria Street, named after the good lady herself. The other side of the carbuncle. With a particularly interesting building behind. It's almost like its insides are on the outside. Can you see that one, that grey one? I don't know 
know if any of you have ever seen um, A Discovery of Witches, the second one with the Elizabethan piece, but all of those horrible streets that they were walking around, well, beautiful the streets they were walking around in Elizabethan times, were actually here and on behind me going towards the Tower of London. It's changed quite a lot, hasn't it? Unsurprisingly, there are lots of archaeologist digs here, and they've actually found Roman remains at the base of this building, which is owned by Mr. Bloomberg. And he keeps it open for school visits or anyone that wants to come and visit this tree. So that's quite nice. Wow, that's a cool building. I am delayed by three hours. Luckily, I have a bar to keep me company. When Leon was with us, he took some aerial drone shots of the castle. This one's side on, showing the stables at the blocks. A bit of the layout gives you a bit more of an idea, I think. This is the front of the castle. As you can see, we'd removed a number of the vines, but there were still vast numbers left. Look at all the foliage there. Gosh, a lot of work's been done since then. And here's the back. Gracious. And you can see on the left-hand side where the rose garden now is, and a better view of the stable block and the backs of the left and right-hand wings. <laughs> Princess, could you please go outside, please?